Okay, hopefully fuel to fire. I just showed you the, uh, the opening riff there. Um, so what I'll do is show you that again, slow it down in detail, and then I'll take you all through the rest of the song. It's Stuart Adams' parts that I'm doing. So the intro, it's the open A, and the D on the 12th fret. <laughs> then you add in the 9th fret on the G. Then the open A, and then the D string on the 11th fret. Then you add in the 12th fret G. And then it's the famous riff, the Guns of Navarone riff, which is reasonably simple. So you've got the open D all the way through uh, in the first few notes, and then you jump up to the open G. So I'll show you what I mean. important when you're playing that, that you've got quite a jump there so when you're playing this bit here you need to get your eyes ready to look at that fret so you hit it first time so I said you're uh, you need to be looking at that fret and your hands will get to it every time if you're looking away look away then uh, you're gonna miss it you're gonna make a hash of it Okay. Then the next bit, the delay comes on. So we've got a bit of echo going on. And uh, it's all on one string, all the way up and down one string, and you're only picking about half the notes, which is, again, I keep talking about Stuart trademarks, it's another one of them, so it's... <laughs> now, again, I talked earlier on about looking for the fret you're on, so... Now, I'm looking up here now, so I hit these notes, and then as soon as I play these notes, I'm looking down here. I'm actually looking at the neck, so my hands are going to hit first time. Now, as I'm getting to the end of that little lick, I'm looking away up here because I need to be here next, and I'm going to click on the detune chorus this time. So without it, it's there. Chorus. So it's the same idea, up and down one string, uh, but it's got the chorus this time. It makes it sound really quite raucous and quite sort of biting. And as soon as you finish that, off with the chorus, off with the delay. So it's dry again, and then you're into the uh, actual verse sections. So the verse is uh, quite tricky to figure out, but it's easy once you actually see how it's played. So it's just simply open D string and the 12th string, but the uh, sorry, the G string at the 14th fret. And then it's open D again, and it's the G and the B at the 12th this time. And then it's the A, open string, and then the D on the 14th fret. And then the last bit there, it's open D and then the G at the 11th fret. So it's a couple of times there, next time it's It's fairly simple, so D string, open, G string, 11th fret and That's A open and the D at the 14th fret Then this time you've got the A at the 10th fret and the D string at the 12th. And then you go on. Okay, so it's. Got open E, and then the D is up at the 16th fret. Then you're finishing up by going to a unison note, so you got the open D and the D string at the 7th fret, which is a D, of course. Again, that's quite a, a common trademark. <laughs> by finishing off the riff, by going to the octave, just to sort of tuck it away nicely and just finish it off. So the whole thing together. Okay, so you got the whole thing twice, two sections of the verse. And then when it goes to the next section, it's so that's D string, 9th fret, and the G string, 7th fret. 
down to the D on the seventh and the G on the sixth. <laughs> So that's the A, the fifth fret, and the D, the fourth fret. So that's like a D chord. Then again. Then you're in the middle section. So I'll show you that very quickly. It's quite simple. You're playing the unison open D and the octave up on the 7th fret G string. And then sometimes he'll do... And sometimes he'll be up here. It's the same idea. And then putting the echo on, putting the high chorus on, and then it's up to the, shall we call it the bagpipe part. Two bits going on. That's the part Bruce plays, and the part Stuart plays over the top is a. Uh... <laughs> Playing that a couple of times, so just slow it down. Now. first finger on both top E and the G strings. It's a bit of a jump, but it does mean there's a slight pause between the two notes. And if you listen to the record in the live version, you hear the little pause going on. Just put a hammer on, on and off. Then next time it's... on the course off again it's back to this and it's got the high parts again just repeat exactly the same as before then it goes back to the opening and um, the guns on our own riff but muted this time Till the very end section so it's the same parts for the verse and the chorus and everything like that but uh, at the very end echoes on again chorus is on again and uh, the sort of closing bagpipey part changes a little bit towards the end as the song finishes up and this is the live version i'm doing by the way So to play the same thing again. And that's it. So that covers the entire song. You just need to assemble the sections together in the right order. So I hope you enjoyed playing that.